Hello, for a while now I've been wondering how I can contribute to the Onion Router project, or Tor, when I have bandwidth but I don't have access to the router to do port forwarding. So I can't become a relay and I can't become, uh, if I really wanted to, an exit node and I certainly can't become a guard or an entry node because all of that requires you to have ports forwarded through to your server or to your computer. The other option is to be a bridge. Bridges are used when people cannot connect directly to the Onion Router network and uh, the Onion Router protocols either being identified and blocked um, or they need to go through lesser known IP addresses uh, whereas the uh, bridges and guards, so the entry nodes, are very well documented and easily accessible through the Tor protocol. The bridges are far less easily accessible. You either need to visit a website, I believe, and it gives you a small set of bridge uh, addresses, or you email them and it automatically replies with, again, a small set of bridge addresses. So governments, networks, and other places blocking those bridge addresses uh, is much more difficult because uh, it's harder to get hold of the list of bridges. Normally, for all the bridges, you need, again, ports forwarded through to your computer or to your server. However, I did come across one single new, fairly experimental, well, I say new, it's been around for about a year, possibly a little bit more, but it's now almost reaching easy to use production phase, called Snowflake. And that is a bridge method that uses WebRTC and essentially stun, S-T-U-N, and other tricks to get around NAT and firewalls. Some other situations where you might find it useful to use the Snowflake bridge is if you are on a mobile network or a broadband provider that uses carrier grade NAT where your internet or your router has an internal IP or an IP that isn't visible to the internet and you've got absolutely no way of port forwarding through to your router. I've tried this on the Chrome mobile browser on Android and it works. Uh, it's probably not particularly stable for the people that are using it unless you've got a way to run it permanently. Um, but it would definitely work through carrier grade net network such as what BT were using on their low tier customers and certainly have heard of other internet providers using it as well. If you wanted to become a bridge and you had spare bandwidth and you wanted to donate it, your computer reaches out to a server somewhere and the computers that need bandwidth or a bridge also reach out to that same central location. That same central location coordinates the connections between you behind your NAT and the person who needs to connect to the Tor network. The upshot is you can now donate your bandwidth to the Onion Router project without having to have access to the router that you're connected to. So you don't need to do port forwarding. If you've got a restrictive firewall, um, then it's quite likely to still work. The other thing that's quite interesting is it works in a browser. You don't need to install any special software. All you need is a modern browser, so Firefox or Chrome. I think it even works in Edge. And you visit the Snowflake website on the Onion Router or the Tor Projects domain. You click a button to say, yes, I want to become a bridge and visit one other web page on the same domain and you become a bridge. So now I'm going to show you how to get set up with the Tor Snowflake. This will make you a bridge on their network. So you'll be transiting uh, traffic between a Tor user and then the first or the guard node on the Tor network. So go to the Tor Snowflake website. You could either just Google for Snowflake Tor or if you go snowflake.torproject.org and it doesn't look like a very exciting page but click on the 
text which says Internet Free Dough, or supposed to say Internet Freedom, but click on that. Asks you whether you want to opt in, and then say yes. And then close that tab. Then I prefer to go to the detailed page, so at the end of the domain, put in forward slash and do snowflake. And there we are. That is running as a snowflake bridge. It is normal, and you'll see it in a moment, to see timeout messages. So timeout waiting for a client offer. That just means that there's nobody waiting to connect, or potentially it means that the coordination server is down as well. But those messages will scroll past and uh, will appear until such time as somebody wants to connect over the snowflake bridge. Then you'll see the screen say a load of other things and then it will say maximum client count reached. You can only have one person using your tour bridge or your snowflake bridge at a time. When that person has finished using it, most of the time I've seen it, the tab will uh, say that it's resetting the bridge and it will start the process again. It will say waiting for client offers and then it will get a, another client connected. A few times I've seen it where it gets stuck and uh, it doesn't restart and it just sits there doing nothing, in which case just reload the tab. So having only one person connected isn't going to be very bandwidth intensive. I found that it's quite fun to duplicate these tabs. So right click duplicate, right click duplicate, right click duplicate. And you can have four people connected or as many tabs as you would like to open. I probably wouldn't recommend loading more than about eight tabs. I made a script earlier which loaded up 30 and left them there for quite a while and they didn't get past any connections so I'm not sure whether there's some sweet spot of how many you should run but running 30 seems to uh, have an adverse effect where you don't get any people connecting to you. But certainly running four throughout the day has been very effective and probably running eight is about I, I would expect the sweet spot. If I do find what a sensible value or a sensible number of tabs to be running is I will put it into the video description on YouTube so make sure you check there if you are interested in that. I hope this video has been helpful to you. If it has please subscribe to my channel. The subscriber numbers really help and it's how YouTube gauge how much you can monetize your channel. Don't really care whether you've got the video notifications switched on or not but the subscription would really help. Thank you very much.